Today we're making raspberry cider, about the simplest cider you could make short of just a plain old apple cider. All right, this is the alcoholic version for those of you in the United States and the rest of the world, just in case you didn't know. Cider actually, to, well, whatever, I'm not gonna get into it. But, okay, to make this cider, you're going to need a fermenter. You're going to need apple juice, you're going to need a lid for that fermenter and an airlock. You're also gonna need some raspberries. You're also you're gonna wanna wait. And star sand to sanitize everything that is here. But, but what was everything sanitized in? <laughs> the really fucking sanitization! I threw her off. Okay, the red bucket of sanitization is literally a bucket over on the side that is filled with star sand in solution, which means star sand mixed with water to the manufacturer's suggested amounts. You're also going to want a hydrometer with a graduated cylinder and some method of getting samples out. There are two optional ingredients that are gonna be in this, and that is Fermato and Pectic Enzyme. They're useful, but not absolutely necessary to make this, but one thing that is necessary is going to be yeast, and we're gonna be using US04 yeast by Safel. Why? Because I have half a packet of it right here that is folded up using my patented folding method. Somebody said they used my patented folding method on a bag of tortilla chips and it blew out the bottom of the bag. They said it was so airtight that it blew out the bottom of the bag. I, I'm still not sure how exactly that happened, but... Well, they might have compressed it to Oh, they holes. compressed it to... Oh. And boom! Yeah, that could be bad. Okay, anyway, our raspberries were bought fresh. We got two 12-ounce packages, which equals 24 ounces, which equals one and a half pounds, and we froze them in a lovely handy-dandy silicone bag here that does not leak. Notice there's no cherry... or cherry. Of course there's no cherry juice. There's no raspberry juice in the bottom of this bowl, but instead we have now defrosted them fully so they're they're cold still, but they're uh, they're no longer frozen. Now, why did we freeze them? A because we couldn't get to the brew fast enough. We were gonna use them fresh, but we couldn't do it the day that we wanted to do it. it. Had to sit for another week. So we froze them to prolong their usability. And it also helps to break up the cell walls because what happens is the water crystals in there form very sharp shards, punctures the cell walls. And then when it defrosts, that's why all that liquid comes out because the cell walls break up, making it much, much easier for the yeast to get to all the sugars. By the way, I want to talk about sugars for just a second, but you know what? Let's get to that when we get to the point of adding this to the stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to very carefully put our fermenter right side up and we're going to pour this apple juice in here. Now, this apple juice isn't just any old apple juice. No, ma'am, sir. This is Kirkland brand apple juice bought from Costco. And the reason why we're so excited about this apple juice is because of its ingredients list. Apple juice. That's right, one ingredient. That's it. We also bought like four gallons of it. So that's why there's so many ciders coming up on the channel. Plus we like cider. Also it's fall time. And so in most areas of the world, not all of them because we have friends in the Southern hemisphere, thank you very much. It is fall and apples are in season. So if you are lucky enough to have a whole bunch of apple trees right in your very own backyard, you can make cider with your own apples. Now, I was thinking, you said we're gonna put the apple juice in first. What if we put the raspberries in first? Well, we're putting the raspberries in a bag and we're gonna put a weight in the bag. And I thought maybe having juice in there would, but it really doesn't matter. Our bags are small though, because oh. we purposefully got smaller bags. Okay, well, of then, then let's, let's go halfway. Let's pour half the juice now, then put in the raspberries, then put in the other half the That's juice. That's compromise. Relationship goals, people. You got it? Need assistance? I got it. And pour that in there? Yeah, I just, you yeah, just, just pour. pour it in there. Okay. And you don't even have to be neat about it because the whole idea is you want to get some oxygen into the beginning of the fermentation. See, she's doing the thing. Yep. So it's okay uh, to splash a little bit. Just don't get it in your eyes. All right, that's about half. Good job. Thank you. Okay, now we need the bag. So would this be a bad time for me to tell you that I haven't started the camera yet? I just wanted to see the look on her face if I said that. Not cool. <laughs> Not cool at all. All right, so these are our new bags. They're made from cheesecloth and they have a little drawstring. Aren't and they adorable? they're pretty awesome. They're much smaller, which is good, but bad because I have concerns about getting the raspberries in the bag and not everywhere else. So we'll see how this goes. I have no such concerns. All right. Sorry, I didn't mean to elbow you in the face if Sorry. I just elbowed you in the face. There's a big mass here. There is a mass. There's a mass of strawberries. It's not strawberries. You're calling them raspberries. Everything. They're cherries, They're cherries. strawberries. Yeah. Get in there. In your home. 
You too good for your home? <laughs> that joke never gets old. What, what is going on here? There's a, like a lump there that doesn't, there we go. There we go. Let me put this in the sink, I'll be right back. That was like a workout. It's, Those raspberries smell so good. They're also coloring the cider already. That's pretty awesome. So this is a fermentation weight. It's just a piece of glass, okay? And we're gonna put that in there very carefully. Derek always says carefully, even though it's, there's no way it can touch the bottom. And that is to hold it into the liquid so that eh, nothing untoward can happen. It'll weigh it down, because it's the weight. But the, the bag can seal up now. I'm releasing it unto you. Oh, okay. It's, it's now my problem is what you're trying to say. Yes. Okay, and I'm just gonna seal it up real good, twist it around a little bit. Don't really know why. It's just what I do. Give it a little tie off, nothing too fancy. And I'm gonna drop that in there. Gently. It was gently. Gently. Okay, now we have some other stuff to go in here. This is where the semi-optional ingredients come in. The first of those is Fermate O. This is uh, two grams of Fermate O and a little bit of water, and I'm mixing it up using the wuss, also known as the whisk of unusually small size. And I like to put it in a little bit of water because it uh, breaks up nicely, as you can see. Otherwise it gets kind of clumpy. Yeah, and then I don't think it works. Now I say it's optional. Yeast really like to have all the proper nutrients, just like, you know, people, you need all the stuff. I don't know that the juices really provide that. So just to be safe, we'll put that in there. If you don't have any, don't worry about it probably going to be fine. Ciders really don't require tons of nutrients to finish, so it's okay. The next semi-optional ingredient is pectic enzyme. Now don't get scared. It's not a, it's, it's not like scary. There's nothing to worry about. It is actually from natural processes, but what this does is it helps break down the pectins that are in the apples especially, but I think raspberries have pectins too. I probably should have checked that before the video, but I know the apple does. So that's all that matters. And also assists in breaking down the raspberries or any whole fruit. So get a little bit more sugars on yeah. them. This helps to get everything you can out of it, but it also keeps it from getting a haze. So it can actually go clear. If you do not have it or do not want to use it, no harm done, don't use it. A little bit cloudy in your cider is not a big deal. I don't, it doesn't really bother me. Just a lot of people have asked us over the years why we don't do it. So we've started using it a little bit and I'm starting to appreciate it. You know, I, I like it. All right, you don't have to do that because I have more juice to put in there. Okay, and put so in the juice. I can do the thing Yep. with the juice. Now we are using a little big mouth bubbler because this is a 1.4 gallon fermenter. So we can put in a full gallon of apple juice as well as the one and a half pounds of raspberries in a bag. And we still have sufficient headroom that this shouldn't blow over. But also once we rack it, we'll probably have a full gallon of actual cider remaining. Look at that color. That's gonna be beautiful. Wow, look at that color. That's gonna be beautiful. <laughs> Okay, so one thing that's left is yeast, but let's take a reading on this first. This is where I wanted to talk about the sugars in the raspberries. A lot of the time when people add fruit, they get concerned that it throws off the gravity reading. Now, in this case, we put it in there, but are all the sugars really extracted? No, uh, probably less than half at this point, just because some of the juice got out. But let me just tell you how much sugar is really in those raspberries. A pound of raspberries has 18 grams of sugars. That means a pound and a half literally has 27 grams of sugars. That comes out to about two points of gravity, literally two points of gravity. And that's if 100% of those sugars get extracted. Uh, it's not even worth considering. It's just so little. Now berries in general have lower sugar than some other fruits. So any kind of berry that you happen to be using is probably going to be a little bit lower. Uh, we're looking at 1.054 for our starting gravity, which is pretty respectable. That's gonna be somewhere in the uh, five, like six to 7% ABV range when it's all said and done. That works for me. I'm just gonna pour that sample back in because this was sanitized. If this had not been sanitized, I would not be pouring that back in. Some people drink it, some people dump it out. I, we're just not some people, I don't understand that. Then we're going to add our yeast. Now, 
You've seen us, if you've watched other videos, we use a whole packet of yeast in most of our brews now. Uh, for ciders, I tend to use halves. There's no real reason to use a full packet. Um, you can if you really want to, it doesn't hurt. You don't need more than a packet, okay? That's, that's something like, if you're making five gallons, just use a whole packet, you'll be fine. Uh, so I have roughly half a packet here. I'm just going to sprinkle it ever so carefully over the top. And I'm going to remember to- Crack your packet! Yep, people gave me so much of a hard time last time, I forgot to do it. Of course, Derek, I had to call him, call it out. She's like, oh, tell me in the comments what Brian forgot to do. Wow, you guys really told me. Okay, I'll remember that for next time, maybe. Do we need to mix that? I'm not going to, okay? Every time I mix it, it sticks all over the place, gets on the sides, goes all over, it's it's already falling. Yeah, we're, we're good. Okay, put the lid on. Check your notes, make sure you got all your stuff in there. Possibly the most important thing that you can do when you're making a brew is take notes. So on, on my notes, I have raspberry cider. Today's date, which is November 15th, 2022. 1.5 pounds of frozen raspberries thawed. One gallon of apple juice, two grams of fermato, one half teaspoon of pectic enzyme, one half packet of USO4 yeast, and our starting gravity of 1.054. What are we gonna do with this now? No, that's it. Probably a week, maybe two, until we see less activity in that airlock. Then we'll be back to give you the first reading. All right, it's been two weeks. Time to take a reading. Let's check this sucker. The first thing you might notice is there's a lot of junk stuck to the sides, okay? Now, I'm okay with that because what a lot of that is is croissant from when it foamed up. It's the proteins it, from the foam that just stuck onto the side and dried up. It's all good. When I look inside, there's nothing untoward, and it smells amazingly good. Oh my God, it smells like, just smells like fresh raspberries, it's incredible. So we're gonna get our first reading. It's even clearing out nicely, yep. look at that. Pretty. I'm not gonna say it as a great color, because I always say it as a great color. <laughs> I'm gonna describe the color instead. It is a lovely pinkish hue. I know some, I know everybody's gonna get that reference, it's all good. Okay, um, Looks like 1.002. Seems a little higher than I would have expected, but um, it's possible. The reason why I say it's probably fine is a lot of fruits actually have some non-fermentable sugars. Even honey actually has a certain amount of non-fermentable sugars in there. So it's totally possible we hit a little bit of that. The apple juice may actually have some too, because our another cider that we did stopped a little bit early too, only a couple of points. So that's just its first reading. We'll give it another week and take another reading, and we'll see you then. Okay, so nine days have gone by. It was 1.002, thinking it's probably right around there again. But let's uh, take the lid off, do our visual inspection. I see a lot of croissant, that's what this is. K-R-E-U-S-E-N, it's called croissant. What is it exactly? It is the proteins and film and yeast holes and whatever that rose up in foam and dried there. It doesn't hurt anything, okay? There's little bits of it on the bag of fruit in here too. Not worried about it at all. The only time that it could be an issue is when we rack this. If it gets too cloudy, we may have to let it set before we bottle, okay? So that's the only thing that we're gonna worry about. That's why we're gonna rack it to a pitcher first and see if it needs to be done like that before we go much further. If, if I try to remove that bag right now, I'm just gonna disturb everything because this is really nice and clear. So we're gonna take our reading first just to make sure that it's done, which Pretty sure it's done. By the way, that's a tip. Always, always take a reading with the hydrometer already in there. That way you don't waste any. You know, every drop is sacred. I know that's not really the line, but family show. Still sitting at 1.002. That's interesting because it is possible there's a little bit of non-fermentable sugar in the fruit. Um, and that seems to be like the go-to whenever that kind of thing happens. Uh, let me take a note here. But it does present an interesting quandary. And what I mean by that is, if we try to carbonate this now, it's possible it won't carbonate because it didn't go dry. So we don't know, is the yeast stalled? Are those non-fermentable sugars? I do have a little trick that I have said a couple times I'm gonna do. This time I'm actually gonna end up doing it though. All right, so what we're gonna do is a little bit of a tasting now, just to see if there's any alterations that should be made. Usually it's sweetness at this point. On the smell, it's very raspberry. I get a little bit of the hints of uh, like a deeper fruit too. It's really nice. I have a feeling though, usually stuff like this, when it's this dry, needs some sweetness to taste really good. And I'm not wrong. It's kind of like a hard seltzer. Yeah. 
It's a little too dry. Oh, wow. It's very mouth drying. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, very, because the tartness of those raspberries just dried my mouth right out. It isn't unpleasant, though. No, it's not at all. I'm exaggerating yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But I would not drink this as it is. We like things sweeter, so we're going to sweeten it. Um, if you do plan on making this, I would highly encourage you to sample it at this time and see. Yeah. Perhaps you might like it dry. Yeah. Once this is carbonated and cold, it might actually be really pleasant. I do think with a few points of sweetness, though, definitely going to be an improvement. Lots of times the dryness for me takes away the fruitiness. This is still reading very fruity to me. Yeah, the raspberry still comes through. I don't get any apple, though, on the flavor. Which raspberry is a stronger flavor than apple, so that's possible. What's going on? But now, we're going to rack. She just totally sprayed me with whatever, whatever <laughs> was on that. It's all right. We end up wearing our brews half the time anyway. Okay, so we're just going to rack it from this to this. And I'm going to leave the bag of fruit behind, try to leave as much leaves behind as I can, and we'll see you in a minute. As expected. <laughs> it got cloudy. Yeah, as soon as I put the, the siphon in, some of the stuff came off, and then I just dropped it all the way to the bottom, yeah. and I was like, ah, what the heck. So we're going to put this into another fermenter, one of the narrow mouths, try to keep a, just as little headspace as we can, though it's not a huge, huge deal. We do want to keep that to a minimum, and then we're going to go let this sit on the shelf for another week or two, and we'll see you then. Okay, so this has been sitting for uh, about a week. Um, yeah, December 8th, today's December 15th, so it's about a week. We racked it to let it clear, and when last we left it, it was at 1.002 gravity. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna rack it to a pitcher because we want to carbonate this, okay? If we weren't gonna carbonate, we can go right to the bottle because this is pretty good, but it's much easier to mix sugar and stuff in in a pitcher than it is in the bottles. We also want to do our preliminary tasting to see if we want to sweeten it more. We does it need augmentation? Thinking perhaps it does. Raspberries should be, you know, they're tart, but you want them to be kind of sweet too. So, yeah, probably. We'll find out. So, as always, when we rack, we use an auto siphon that was freshly cleaned in... <laughs> Turbos. Yeah. Um, you, as you can see by the drips. Put that end in the destination, put this end in the source, make sure one's higher than the other, the source should be higher. And um, get it started. That's it. I'm going to drop this all the way to the bottom because it's very, very clean in there. I'm not, I'm not overly concerned about any sediment because there's like just about nothing in there. And we'll just let it run. And now we drink! <laughs> all right, so yeah, we do want to just get a quick little taster here just to see how it is it's incredibly clear yep. beautiful color like a nice pinkish hue with a little bit of an orange to it kind of my hair. peachy oh well, no your hair is a lot more maroonish red this is like a orangey red the smell is incredible it actually really does smell amazing mm, yeah smells good it's got the tartness. Yeah, Ooh, it's okay. tart. There's a lot of tang there. I think some sweetness would offset that nicely. Yeah. So there's a couple ways to sweeten, all right? We can add an actual sweetener like sugar or honey or brown, brown sugar might be weird, but you can use that if you wanted to. The problem there would be now we have to figure out a way to stop fermentation if we want to carbonate. So instead of playing it risky where we let it carbonate for a while and then pasteurize, we're going to use a non-fermentable sugar. Now, we have found through testing and experience that erythritol adds a slight amount of flavor alteration. Not a tremendous amount, but a slight, slight amount. And it also messes with my blood sugars days from now. Just if anybody's diabetic out there, keep that in mind. Test yourself after trying erythritol. See if it does it to you, too. It's a weird thing, but it does. Allulose, however, no effect whatsoever on me. And it tastes almost exactly like sugar. So I think this has a strong enough flavor mm -hmm. that even if there's a slight difference between the sugar and the allulose, we won't even know. We, we won't detect it at all. all so right. allulose, allulose it is. Those of you that have been around for a little while may, have, may know the way that we sweeten things. Very, very precisely and scientifically. In other words, I dump some sweetener in and then we mix it up and taste it. 
And there's a good reason for that. Everyone has their own personal bias. I could say, well, I'm going to put in exactly this much, and it really doesn't make much difference because if there's a few ounces more, or a few ounces less, that changes it. We have almost exactly a gallon today, so that's an unusual situation. We've also found that our personal sweetness preferences changes drastically based on the ingredients, the other flavors that are already present. So like when we did the capsicumel, we found that we needed it to be significantly more sweet to balance out those spicy notes, otherwise it would just be drowned in spice. And we found that in certain berry things that have that tartness, like this raspberry does, we don't need it quite as sweet, so we still get that tartness that we enjoy. But what we have found also is that the amount you put in isn't as important as the reading. So we try, we forget sometimes, but we try to give a hydrometer reading at the end so that if you want to reproduce that result, you totally can, whether you're making half a gallon, gallon, two gallons, five gallons, doesn't matter. You don't have to scale anything. You just add enough to get to that point. Um, I just put in probably half a cup of allulose. Now, allulose is about three quarters as strong as sugar. So it's a little bit less than a half cup of sugar, but it also dissolves a lot easier. So it actually works really, it's, it's almost tailor-made for this purpose. Tastes like sugar, doesn't ferment, and dissolves easily. I mean, you can't really ask for a lot better than that. So it is dissolved. Time for another taste. Oh, you gotta chug that. I'm sorry. I thought I finished it. Gotta chug that whole four drops. Now, this is hard to do. In an ideal situation, we would spend much more time enjoying this, savoring this, testing it back and forth, living with it for a while. You try to do this on camera, we're showing you the, the shortened version, if you will, but you, you get the idea. It's better. Mm -hmm. I think with carbonation, it'll be even better. I think it needs more though. I think it does too, yeah. Okay, probably about as much as I put in the first time. Mm -hmm. You just kind of want this to be on the sweet side. It just really feels like it should be. Not candy sweet, but sweeter than that. Wow, oh, that really does dissolve super well. Did you finish it this time? I think I did. No? No. There was a drop left. It smells exactly the same. Pretty sure that's nailed. Mm -hmm. the, the balance of the sweet and tart in this is lovely. It tastes like a glass of raspberries. And with that, Sparkling. Oh yeah, this is gonna be wonderful. So let's take a reading just so we know how much we put in there. So right. I just, I have the, the yeah. baster here. I just need the hydrometer. Okay. By the way, that is something very interesting about non-fermentable sugars is that they still read. So even though it's a non-fermentable sugar, it still adds density to the liquid. So it still comes through. And this is now a, come on bubbles, go away. 1.016. Okay, let me get a pen and take a note. 1.016, a little on the sweeter side, which, you know, we wanted it that way. So that kind of works out well. I am just gonna pour the sample right back in. So now we have our flavor set where we want it. The next step is to prep it for natural carbonation. Right, now for natural carbonation, you actually need a fermentable sugar. Today, we're going to be using plain old sugar. Can you use different kinds of sugars? Of course, there's, there's a multitude of sugars. Some people like to use uh, things specifically for brewing and that's your prerogative. It's totally up to you. I've never had a problem with plain old white sugar. So that's what we use. How much do we use? This is one of those topics that you can alter the amount. We tend to go right smack in the middle. If you check out the calculators, they range, there's a wide range of how much sugar to add. We use 28 grams per gallon, almost exclusively. It's a nice, it's not on the high end, it's not on the low end, it's like smack in the middle of the recommendation. That way, even if we were a little bit off, it's not gonna hurt anything. And what I'm doing is I just poured off some of the cider and I'm gonna pour that 28 grams of sugar in here and I'm going to use, well, it's not exactly the Wiss, it's the Wiss's older, bigger brother. And I'm gonna mix that up. 
Now, the reason I'm doing it this way is this way I can be sure that all that sugar is dissolved before it gets in there, and then it just mixes really well. Can you do this with a little bit of water instead of the brew? Of course you can, no, no big deal. Um, this should not cause any oxidation problems or anything like that. That's why I'm doing a very small quantity. The idea is you want to mix the sugar into the whole batch before you bottle. The old fashioned way was to take a teaspoon or whatever, or half teaspoon or wh whatever amount of sugar and put it into each bottle. I highly recommend not doing that. And here's why. If you remember what I just said about the 28 grams, if I was to put in 60 grams, well, that's off the chart now, that could make a bottle bomb. And what I mean by bottle bomb is it could overpressurize and explode. Now, if I have a bottle that's a little on the weaker side, even being on the high end of that carbonation could cause it to explode. We've never had one. We've never had a problem using this method. That's why we keep doing it because it's been extraordinarily safe and repeatable. When you put the teaspoon in, sometimes you're gonna to put too much, sometimes a little too little, and some of them won't carbonate right, some of them won't overcarbonate. It just, inconsistency, it doesn't really make sense to me. Why not just do it this way and everything's the same? As you go smaller in volume, like a teaspoon or that kind of thing, it's much harder to be exactly precise. I used, a very precise jeweler scale. Some people like to call it something else. No, it's not. It's a jeweler scale. That's what it said when I bought it. I use that to weigh, to weigh out 28 grams. And we're both getting our mix all talked up today. And that way I know how much is in here. But if I did it by teaspoons, they could be a little bit more, a little bit less. It could be too much, too much, too much, too little. You know. In other words, a full gallon adding the sugars into it the margin of error is gonna be less effective than in the little oh, tiny one that we yeah. do it in each individual bottle. So another safety precaution. Now, something else that I'm doing as a safety precaution is, because this has been like a month, um, we found sometimes ciders don't like to carbonate because the yeast might have gone too dormant. There's all sorts of things you that You might have racked happen. it too well. Who knows? Yeah. You know, the colony is just not up to snuff. It's been sitting a little while. So I just have, a half open packet of yeast. I know, shocker, I have a half packet of yeast. And I'm just literally going to take a few grains, just not even in the half packet, just, just a little bit, just a little bit. And that is like my insurance yeast, okay? I like to call it that because it literally does just give you a little bit of extra insurance that you know you have yeast in there that's active. It doesn't need to build up a colony or anything. It just needs to consume the little bit of sugars that you just added and carbonate your brew. And that's it. So that's a nice way to, you know, okay, it's been sitting a little too long. Let's, uh, let's make sure. So I'm gonna literally just take this, dump it in here and mix it all through. By the way, the spoon was sanitized. The whisk was sanitized. The Pyrex was sanitized. Everything was sanitized. It's what we do. We sanitize and we make brews. Now we have a homogenous mixture that has our priming sugar in it, our yeast in it, and our non-fermentable sweetener. So this is good to go to be bottled and we don't ever have to pasteurize. It'll be stable at room temperature. Perfect way to go. So we're gonna go ahead and bottle these off camera. We have videos on how to bottle. I'll make sure to link that in the description below if you'd like to know what our bottling process looks like. And then we are going to put them in our bomb shelter, which is basically just a heavy duty tub that we put our carbonating beverages in just in case something were to go amiss, it's gonna contain that mess in the tub rather than having glass shrapnel go all over our house. Even though we've begun bottling off camera more or less because it saves a little bit of time, makes the videos less than four days long, I did wanna show you the type of bottle we're using. This is actually a swing top bottle made to hold pressure. That's critical when carbonating. If you try using a bottle that is not made to hold pressure, like a standard wine bottle or something, it's going to explode. I will just tell you, there is no uncertain terms, it's going to. Old beer, reused beer bottles, swing top bottles such as this that are made to hold carbonation, things like that are perfect for this application. Kombucha bottles are actually wonderful because they're made to hold carbonation too. I think this actually might be a kombucha bottle. If you are reusing them, please check your seals yep. before storing. Make yeah, sure these are all replaceable. Yep. Make sure it seals good, make sure the spring is nice and tight, and that way you can be assured that it should be just fine. We like to use swing tops because even though it makes a really good seal, in the event that it happened to overcarbonate, I believe the seal would give out before the bottle. In most instances, we've actually had a couple people report on that, that they said, yeah, I had some spray come out before the bottle exploded. 
awesome. Even if it doesn't work every time, if it works sometimes, it's a little bit of extra insurance. If you want to use bottle caps though, they work great too. Screw caps for carbonated bottles are pretty rare. Um, I don't think I've ever seen a, a carbonated bottle with a screw cap on it. But if you happen to have... Sodas do it, but they have the extra seal yeah, thing. That's a whole so they have to thing. break the seal and then unscrew yeah. it. So it's but anyway, we, I've babbled far too long. I just wanted to show you what kind of bottles we actually bottle it in. We'll be back in probably a week to two weeks once these carbonate, and we'll show you what they look like then. All right, so this has been sitting for like two weeks in the bomb shelter, and, well, we're going to taste it. So, okay, so we backswing this to 1.016 with allulose and it's sitting at 7.3% and it's been naturally carbonated. Let's see, did it work? Are we ready? Yeah. I, I'd say it worked. All right, but you know what it's time for? The poor cam. Okay, now I want to say something. That's seven point three percent. It's actually seven percent from the fermentation. 03 percent comes from the natural carbonation because you know that's fermentation too. Um, on appearance, it's beautiful. This is like a ten for clarity. Yes, I mean, it's absolutely. it's about perfect. It just it looks absolutely crystal clear. Everything are, about it seems just right. Are the color of watermelon? Kind of, yeah. It's like a pinkish hue. On the scent, it's got a little bit of that harshness to me still. It just does. Yeah, part of that, it, it smells carbonated. Does that make sense? Yeah, it yeah. does. It smells carbonated. <laughs> yeah. But I smell the raspberry. I Definitely do. smell yeah. some apple. And uh, like you said, it smells carbonated. I'm, I'm going in. Wow, it tastes like raspberry soda. That is fantastic. It's very, very good. That is beautiful. That is exactly... And that is Gizmo. No, that was Cassie. Oh, that was Cassie. Yelling at Gizmo. Cassie, go to your room. Go to your room. Go to your room. But when I envision raspberry cider, this is what I think it should taste like. So I am tickled pink. Ha 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 No, really, I've, I'm so happy right now. I think the sweetening was absolutely necessary. Mm -hmm. There's still a strong tartness from the raspberry yeah. and from the uh, the apple too, yep. which doesn't always happen with that juice, but we, we are getting a little bit of more of that. But it's appropriate. Yeah, it's cutting the sweetness, and that's why I think we ended up going to the 1.016 on the sweetness was because there was so much of that extra acidity feeling um, that it needed it. But I think, I think we did good. Any more sweet would just be too much, yeah. any less wouldn't be enough. And sometimes that's difficult to judge, particularly when you know you're going to carbonate a beverage, because the process of carbonation can, can trick sometimes, the brain. Sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, because lots of times we associate carbonated beverages with something sweeter. Even beer. It's because it reduces the density of the liquid in your mouth. So. It makes it feel lighter, therefore yeah. sweeter. Uh, yeah. I don't know. <clears throat> There's something to it. So then when you're back sweetening prior to carbonation, it's kind of a, a guessing game, but... You go a little less sweet than you think. We hit this right on the head, I think. This is lovely. This is one of those, like, definitely nice middle of summer types of drinks. You know, of course, here it is. A couple days after Christmas, we're drinking this, but it's Florida, you know. It is uh, 57 degrees out now. That's warm compared to what it's been a couple, the last couple days. And I know other people live in colder places, but this is Florida, okay? Anyway, back to the cider. Yeah. It's, I it's awesome. I don't know what to say other than random positive adjectives. The flavors that I'm getting are the tartness of the raspberry, the sweetness of fruit definitely comes through. Um, the apple is there without being too too prominent, but it's it's got a good apple flavor without overdoing it. What can I say? The acidity level is is quite good. It's high. But that balances out with the strength of the flavors, the strength of the sweetness, and then the carbonation just balances this out. Really, really nice. I mean, it's, it's just great. I'm glad we use allulose as a back sweetener because you're enjoying this. Yeah, I can actually drink and this And now one. you can drink this without too much worry. Mm -hmm. It's good. And honestly, 7.3%, it's no slouch, you know? It's only a couple points lower than some of the wines we've made. Yeah. So it's it's gonna pack quite a punch for a cider. You know, you might think, oh, it's raspberry cider. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, have the whole bottle. <laughs> Let me know how you feel. But because it does 
kind of tastes like a soda. Mm. I think I think it'll be a sleeper. It'll sneak up on you. And you'll yeah, like, it goes down really easy. I don't taste alcohol mm -mm. really. It doesn't it taste more like a soda than a, than a fermented cider? But that's uh, I don't know. I kind of like that this time. Yeah. So it's nice to have a variety of things. It is. Um, I guess we need to put a score on this. I am ready. <laughs> okay. I got to do the countdown. You're sipping. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. I'm waiting for you. Well, you made it. I'm you waiting see? on you. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you sure? One, two, three. Nine, nine point five. five. Yep. I couldn't quite make it to ten. There's still a little bit of an odd... Uh, astringent bitterness to me in like the three-quarter mouth part that I don't really know what it is. I don't know if it's the malic acid of the apple or if it's the... Uh... Yeah. But it, that's it. I mean, we're talking like that's how picky you got to be to notice. My it. half a point reduction was simply that the only thing I could imagine that would make this better if it was just that half a point much more raspberry flavor pronounced. Oh, okay. But uh, to me, it's that weird aftertaste that we're we're saying smells like carbonation, but it actually comes through in the taste too. Yeah. There's there's an odd it, it comes out in an aftertaste. Now I, just, I don't have any remedy for that. I think that's no, just part of the exactly the thing. Now let me just explain. It's 0.5 of a point. <laughs> it's not a huge deal. It's not a big deal at all. Um, I could taste this on another day and say, no, that's a 10. What am I doing? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Me too. So, you know, when you're sensitive to it and you're looking for it, we're looking for things to make it not a 10. That's that's essentially how I do it now. Yep. It starts out as a 10. What makes it not a 10? And that's the only thing that I find even slightly unpleasurable about this. Other than that, it's it's wonderful. This is great. So we're apparently gonna keep drinking this. And uh, we're going to let you guys go now. So as always, guys, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.